You know, I cannot believe the output that we've seen from Beetle and Grimm's in the last year or so. I haven't been able to keep up at all. I remember when they launched their first box back with Dragon Heist in 2019. And over time, we certainly got some really like top end platinum boxes, but they also started putting out gold and silver boxes, which were more affordable. And I was so happy about that because increasingly prices are going up across the board and it's putting a lot of fun things that we like to talk about on this channel out of reach of most people. So I am really happy to see Beetle and Grimm's bringing their premium boxes down to a more affordable range. And they also ventured into other IPs with a Critical Role box, with a Pathfinder box, a the Pathfinder Character Chronicles, which are here behind me. And now they're even doing Magic the Gathering boxes, and I have no idea what's going on there. And they've even been moved on to beyond pure adventure boxes, and we're doing things like rule books and lore books and bestiary boxes like this one here, Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons, Silver Edition. And many thanks to Beal and Grimms for sending it to us to review. I'm really curious how they take this compendium of dragon lore and turn it into a special edition box. So we'll take a closer look. Before we jump in, today is launch day for Dungeons and Lasers Encounters by our sponsor, Archon Studios on GameFound.com. You are going to want to check this out if you want some high quality outdoor scatter terrain, some great unpainted minis, and some fantastic battle mats. You can choose between four boxes, the Elven Woods with trees, hills, and a campsite, Swamps of Doom with soggy ground, a complete dock set, gnarled trees and a rowboat, Land of Giants with its set of crumbling ruins, and the creature pack with 32 minis including a wyvern, shambling mound, an evil unicorn, and all sorts of foul beasts. Plus, if you back the project on GameFound, you'll get a free Tarask mini. Go check it out today at the link below. That's Dungeons and Lasers Encounters by Archon Studios. So let's start by getting an overview of everything included in the Fizzbands box. As always, you get the Fizzbands book divided into smaller booklets. There's a new saddle stitched booklet called Tales from the Warehouse, which contains 10 encounter frameworks and a short adventure. You also get a sheet with the elegy for the first world. There are two double-sided battle maps on canvas paper, 14 in-world handouts, many designed to kick off the included encounters, a dragon tooth necklace and four dragon horde scarab pins, a coin of completion for fizz bands, 60 encounter cards, 25 magic item cards, artwork pulled from the book to display to your players, four pre-generated character sheets, and 15 dry erase dragon layer maps. Fizzbin's Treasury of Dragons is a D&D lore and bestiary book all about the dragons and how you can add them to your games. It introduces the gem dragons into 5th edition, and it expands upon the lore of the metallic and chromatic dragons as well. There are new player options, a bestiary with dragon-related monsters, there's magic items, everything you would expect in a dragon book. We did a full rundown of the book in a video that you can see in the eye in the corner of your screen up there. If you pick up the Fizzbin's box from Beetle and Grimm's, you'll get the complete text of the adventure in these four little booklets here. You have chapters one and two, the character creation and dragon magic. Chapters three and four, dragons in play and layers and hordes. Chapter five, the big draconomicon. And you hit chapter six, which is the best Jerry with all those new stat blocks. But this book really is centered around this book here, which is called Tales of from or Dragon Tales from the Warehouse. It contains 10 encounter frameworks, which means about a page and a half of information to help you run one shots. Quickly, you get an Amethyst Dragon Encounter for fourth level characters, a fifth level Moonstone Dragon Encounter, a sixth level I Drake Encounter, a seventh level Dragon Turtle Encounter, an eighth level Topaz Dragon Encounter, a ninth level Deep Dragon Encounter, a 10th level Dragon Bone Golem Encounter, an 11th level or higher Emerald Dragon Encounter, an 11th level or higher crystal dragon encounter, and a 17th level or higher elder brain dragon encounter. They're written by Beetle Ingram Stalwarts, Justice Armand, John Ciccolini, Bill Rahor, Charlie Rahor, and Paul Shapiro. Most of the encounters start with a letter either addressed to the PCs or found by them. In a typical BNG style, you get in-world documents that you can hand out to your players for all of them. One is less of a letter and more of a theater ticket, though. There are some maps included as well. The dragon 
dragon turtle adventure makes use of this map showing the back of this ancient dragon turtle shell. Maybe one of the most fun maps Beetle and Grimms has made yet. It's 24 inches by 30 inches like all the included maps. I'll leave you to discover more about the various features on its back here. On the opposite side is a crystal dragon's layer, which is used in its included adventure. It's a pretty good generic mountaintop layer map that you might use for a white dragon, a silver dragon, a yeti tribe defending an arcane gate, or a frost giant y'all and his war band. It's adapted from the crystal dragon map included in the original book, as is this map of a topaz dragon's lair. Again, it's a pretty non-specific cavern that you can use for any number of encounters, but the maps themselves are really nicely detailed on nice canvas paper. Just lay a few books on them ahead of time to make sure they lay flat for your game. Perhaps the biggest draw of the book, though, is a short adventure at the back for four to six third level characters called In the Belly of the Beast by Elisa Teague, who is the lead RPG game designer at Renegade Games. On our channel, you might know her best for writing the 5e campaign guide for Wardlings, which had some really super cute minis back in the day. You can see some of those up in the eye in the corner of your screen up there now. This is a 10 page adventure in which the players are contracted by a sapphire dragon to test her lair's defenses. It uses these three in-world documents here, which will help with some of the puzzles, and it also makes use of the hardware that comes with the set. You get four of these little scarab pins, these horde scarab pins, which you can wear, but which are also used in one of the adventures, one of the puzzles in the adventure. The set also comes with a dragon tooth necklace, which also plays into the adventure. Now, I wasn't able to find the actual dragon tooth in my box, though the necklace cord was included. I'm not sure if it was accidentally left out of my box or if it got misplaced placed as I was putting this review together. I still do have COVID and I'm doing my best, but here you can see a picture of it from the Beetle and Grimm's website. This is a pretty wild little story with lots of fun little puzzles and shenanigans, and it comes with its own battle map that you can use. You can see it right here. It's the same size as the other maps. It also has a spot to use with those horde scarab uh, little pins here. And again, all these little rooms can be used in a lot of different circumstances. So keep this map handy when you need like a generic indoor battle map. While this set doesn't come with minis, the WizKids uh, Fizzbands mini sets can be used for most of the encounters in these adventures. You can see our review of all those minis up in the eye of the corner of our screen up there. I don't really want to spoil any of the adventures here. They're uh, pretty diverse, entertaining, and they're all setting agnostic as well. They're all pretty much standalone too, which is great because if you get this box, you can use these encounters and the end world letters and whatever 5e campaign you're running. Forgotten Realms, Eberron, Ravnica, or the realms explored in the upcoming Radiant Citadel book. This book here is 36 pages of fun stories to tell with your gaming group. Do keep in mind that they are frameworks though. They're going to be, you are going to be expected to fill in the details, probably from the campaigns that you decide Decide to drop these encounters into. So more so than most of the other Beetle and Grimm's encounters that we've seen in the past, you're gonna have to put a little bit of meat on these bones, but you certainly get enough of a skeleton to work with. Beetle and Grimm's has done just what I always wanted them to do, and they've tied most everything in the box together around those adventures and encounters. They brought in the in-world handouts, the hardware, and all the maps, but there are a few more things in the box as well. You'll find this little card box. It has 17 magic item cards and eight draconic gift cards. The magic items cover all the items presented in the book, plus the dragon's hordes items that can grow in power the longer they're in the dragon's horde absorbing magic. Each of those cards lists all four stages, so you'll have to remember which one you currently have. The Draconic Gift cards contain abilities you might gain after a dragon's death, whether you're the dragon's chosen heir or its killer, or maybe both. The cards have a nice glossy finish and are two and three quarters inches by four and three quarters inches. I quite like the design of them as well. They make good use of the art from the original book. Beetle and Grimms always likes to give us pre-generated characters to help us jump right into the action. They're also nice to use as NPCs if the players want to make their own characters. And of course, the characters make use of the new player options presented in the book. This time, we get third level characters, including a Dragonborn Sorcerer with a Gem Dragon Heritage and a Draconic Bloodline, a Dragonborn Monk, who also has a Gem Dragon Heritage and follows the Way of the Ascendant Dragon, a Lizard Folk Ranger, who is a Drake Warden, and a Human Fighter who has the gift of the drift of the gem dragon feet and the eldritch knight martial archetype. It does make use of spells from Xanathar's Guide to Everything, so make sure you have access to that, or you can just switch out the spells if you want to. Each character comes with a fun backstory as well, so you have something to sink your teeth into when you start playing. 
The Fizzbands book gives us sample layer maps for most of the creatures featured in the Draconomicon section of the book. Beetle and Grimms has pulled out uh, all of those little maps and placed them onto these little reference sheets. They are eight and a half by 11 inches on glossy paper, so you can use wet or dry erase markers on them for marking traps or monster locations or loot or what have you. There are 15 sheets in all. They are single-sided with space on the back to write your own notes. A helpful little GM's tool as your players go dungeon delving. The other staple of Beetle and Grimm's boxes are the encounter cards, which you can hang over your DM screen to show the art to your players while you have access to the stat blocks and the lore. This time we get 60 different cards. A lot of the various aid stages of the dragons are separated onto different cards. For example, you get a card each for the ancient crystal dragon and the adult crystal dragon, and a shared card for the young crystal dragon and the crystal dragon wormling. And they don't put anything on the front of the card but the art, so you don't have to worry about your players getting any extra identifying information about the creatures that they didn't earn. And as always, they pull the art out of the book and place it on these little folded sheets so you can easily share them with your players at the appropriate moment. The backs of each sheet will tell you the name of the art, the page number of where it can be found in the book, and the name of the artist. One thing that Beetle and Grimms has started selling separately are these campaign coins, which have the name of the adventure, in this case, D&D Fizzbands Treasury of Dragons and the year 2022. Now, they have these for a lot of the D&D campaigns and some other ones, and they're designed so that when you complete a campaign with your gaming group, you can get a couple of these coins and hand them out so they have a little memento of their adventure. So if you are interested in these, they do have them separately on their website. You don't have to buy big boxes like this in order to pick these up. So you can go check these out if this is something you want to give out to your players. Before we start wrapping up, I wanted to thank our other sponsor for this video, the kind folks at Hit Point Press. This box set and Fizzbands gives you some fun things to add to your ongoing campaigns. But if you're looking for more, check out the Big Bad Booklet series. Each monthly booklet gives you a new baddie to pit against your adventuring party with a backstory, multiple story hooks, personality traits, stat blocks, tactics, and more. The books are fully illustrated and come with 10 digital reference cards and even VTT assets and a printable SDL file so you can print your own mini of that month's big bad. This month, come meet Zarian, an eldritch horror who's managed to slip through a crack in reality and tie its essence to a mortal host, a tiefling scholar named Fidelity. Now it plans to shatter the veil between worlds permanently. Will you stop Zarian from devastating the material plane, or will it shatter your party to ruins? Find out today at BigBads.com or use the link below the video. What I love about this box so much is that anyone can make use of it. Most, if not all, the Beetle and Grimm sets that we've reviewed in the past were tied to a particular adventure, and it's great if that's the campaign you're running, but you're not really going to get a lot of use out of the set once the campaign is done, and there's no real way to justify getting the box if you don't want to run that particular adventure. What you have here, though, you can bring to any campaign. The material is intentionally setting agnostic, and the included adventures are standalone, so you can run the Sapphire Dragon Encounter as part of your Rise of Tiamat adventure, the Deep Dragon Encounter as part of Out of the Abyss, the Crystal Dragon Encounter as part of Storm King's Thunder, or you can make them all standalones if you want to. And the in-world documents give you that great tactile way to pull your players into the story. And the included battle maps, while there aren't very many of them this time around, are as detailed and beautiful and versatile as ever. And you can use those encounter and item cards here in all sorts of adventures as well. My favorite part of the sets are usually those creative encounters that they write, and that's the case here as well. Do be warned again that these are encounter frameworks, so you're going to want to add some flesh to the bones of them this time around. There's plenty of information to get you going, but you'll need to use your own creativity to add to the framework, and it's expected that you're going to be running these as part of your ongoing campaign, so you'll be pulling characters and lore from the campaign that you're running up to that point to fill in the details of the encounters they provide you with here. The silver edition of Fizzbin's Treasury of Dragons is available now for $185. We still have quite a few Beetle and Grimm's boxes to review here on the channel, so be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything. Also, don't forget to check out the Dungeons and Lasers Encounters Game Found campaign launching today to get your free Tarask Mini and check out this month's Big Bad from Hit Point Press at BigBads.com. Many thanks to our sponsors for their support. Thank you for bearing with me today. I am still trying to get over this COVID infection. I can't hear myself out of my left ear and I can't breathe through my nose. 
But the show must go on. If you found this video helpful, clicking the little thumbs up button down below me helps us out a lot. And using our links below the video to support our sponsors is the number one way you can help keep us on the air. Come chat with us on Discord and follow along with everything we're doing over on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. For now, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.